The Meebles and Miniatures podcast is sponsored by Two Fat Lardies and also the donations via PayPal and Patreon of you, the listener. Thank you to everyone for your most generous support. The Meeples and Miniatures podcast, episode 195. Panzamek. With hosts Neil Shuck, Mike Hobbs, Mike Whittaker and Dave Luff, and guest Andy Cooper from Westwind Productions. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Meeples and Miniatures podcast. My name is Neil Shook and I am once again joined by a veritable avalanche podcast co-hosts. First off, we have the Welsh wizard himself, Mr. Michael Hobbs. Good evening, sir. Hello, hello. Nice metaphor. How are you? I, I'm fine. Sorry? I'm just saying it's a nice metaphor. An avalanche. What, an avalanche? An avalanche of co-hosts, yes. <laughs> Well, I mean, I mean, what do you call? I mean, what do you call a group of podcasters? Uh, yeah, answers on a postcard, uh, <laughs> indeed. And then, of course, we have uh, the Luffmeister himself. Mm. Hello, everyone. Good evening, Mister Luff. How are you? Hello. Uh, yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right. Not bad. Cool. Cool. Bought anything recently? No, don't be silly. <laughs> just, just sort of chat. Just sort of chat. You know. <laughs> and and then finally, of course, we have. The man himself. It is indeed the phantom cake snatcher of old Peter Bretan. How long will it be before <laughs> I finally decide to let that one go, I wonder? Good evening, Mr Whittaker. If you'd actually get your bleep down to Peterborough and play Dungeon Saga like you keep promising, you could actually have some of the cake and then we could knock this on the head. It's Luffy's fault. He, refu- he refuses to go anywhere when there's rugby on. Oh dear, oh lord! So we have to fit in Dungeon Saga around the Tigers' home schedule, do we? And um, um, <laughs> and the Six Nations. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, fine. Yeah, yes, yeah, six Six Nations are on, so we're not doing anything until March. A big game this weekend. I will have eaten that cake by then, you know. Yeah, you can always make another one. Freeze it. Can't freeze cake; it goes off. Good yeah. evening, folks. <laughs> Good evening. Yes, big game of the weekend. Yeah, England, for, uh, yeah, England, Wales. Go on, Wales. <sighs> you might be the minority there, Hobbsy. <laughs> we always are. <laughs> yes. Uh, and in the meantime, all I can have to say is, Falcons, what were you doing? Oh. oh. Anyway, we're not here to to remonstrate with you know somebody throwing a 20, throwing away a twenty five point leap lead with 17 minutes to go, but we'll, you know. Right, one of What's your defeats, about? isn't it, Neil? What's he on about? Do you know what he's on about, Hobbs? <sighs> I've got no idea. No idea. Don't know what he's on about. I didn't realise this was a sporting podcast. No, yeah. nor did I. <laughs> Mr Whittaker, harsh but fair. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And those two were so busy moaning, they missed it. Indeed. Yes, yes in a manoeuvre that, that is potentially going to egg for a good be called the doing a shook. Yeah. <laughs> once again, sna- once again, snatching defeat from the jaws, jaws of victory. victory. Indeed, absolutely. <laughs> yes, I think it'll be called doing a Ryan actually, but that's by the by. Uh, what but... have we got today, Neil? Oh, on today's show, shortly we're going to be catching up with what we've all been up to for the past week. In the main part of the show, we will then be talking to Andy Cooper from Westwood Productions, and we'll be uh, chatting to him about. Uh, what Westwind and Forged in Battle have been doing over the past 12 months, because they've been fairly quiet, but it's because they've been moving away doing various bits and pieces, and we find out about their new Kickstarter project. That's about it, really. 
so, uh, so, so that's what we primarily got in store for you today. So, what we'll do at this point, I think we'll take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll find out what we've all been up to. I must get through to Sergeant Watson's position. Jenkins, cover me! Sir! Whoa. Whoa. Sergeant Watson, bring your men in! Withdraw! Oh, it's all right, sir. We're enjoying ourselves. What? Yes, sir. It's these here chain of command rules, sir. We're having great fun. Chain of command? That's right, sir. It's a challenging but fun blend of command and control. It gives me the freedom I want to fight the way I want to. Never had so much fun, sir. But we've cooked you some sausages. Can't be helped, sir. Me and the lads are staying put. Chain of command, World War II, platoon level rules from two fat lardies. They really put you in control. And they're even better than sausages. What have we been playing? What have we been buying? We might even have painted something. The Meeples and Miniatures crew reveal all. Well, it's that point of the show where we're going to catch up with what we've been up to in the last week or so. Obviously, it's only been a week, so not a lot to remember. <laughs> so, Mr. Hobbs, what have you been playing, what have you been buying, and what have you been painting? Playing nothing. Nothing? No, my, my, nothing. My game's got cancelled. Oh. Honestly, my my uh, regular opponent, Mark, um, came down with a lurgy. So, um, we had to cancel our game, which is a shame. Um, painting, I've been doing some more epic y stuff. Because that's still ongoing. And then I got distracted by painting a Sherman tank. A special Sherman tank. An, an oddball Sherman tank, some would say. Oh, this one from your f- f- from your purchase at Panath? Yes, wobbly shells at Panath. Ah. So I just posted a picture on Twitter. And it's very nice. Oh, because you finished it? Yeah. Oh, cool. <clears throat> yeah, so... So you painted a a twenty eight mil Sherman in a week. Yeah, and, and the crew. And the crew. Uh, uh, <sighs> Lots of storage. It's a lovely model. I've got to say, if if you want a Sherman, get get the oddball one. It's got glass, oh, brilliant, positive vibes, man. <laughs> <laughs> I had a good feeling about that tank, and you know something, I was yeah. It paid off. Yeah. Um, oh, good. So, so, any wobbly shelves this week? Well, I was going for the epic rules for Command and Colors because we're we're getting together next week, six of us, and we're going to be a, be playing a big um, Command and Colors six player yes. game. Yes. So mm. I was going through the box, you know, and opening that, and as you do, I noticed all of these um, these scenarios for Auslitz. Oh and yeah, about, yeah, they're yeah, like Austrians. Yeah, Austrians and, and Russians, which I haven't got. Oh no! What should I say? <laughs> um, you mean you hadn't got? I hadn't. I hadn't got no. And now I have. Oh dear! <laughs> Hang on, you bought both. Yes. <laughs> I can't do no, no, without... You have to buy both <laughs> sides just to make sure that if nobody else turns up with figures, you can still play the game. No, 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 he's only got one side, because he's got a fridge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Battle of the Three Emperors and all that sort of stuff, isn't well, it? Well, you yeah, know? yeah, yes, it's it. Yeah. How do you ask this without the, vote? Yeah, the Austrians? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I must have, I must admit, when, when I was going through all the, um, all the scenarios, uh, cause I was, I, I went through and put all the scenarios, uh, into order so we could play them in order. Yeah, how worrying is that? I was going through, and I got halfway through the um, halfway through the uh, the the Austrian box, 
go through the scenarios and suddenly went, I ain't got where's Austin it's <laughs> It's like, you know, <laughs> huge battle, where the heck is it? And of course then you find out it turns up in the epic box set, which of course is the only one I haven't got yet. It's well worth getting the epic one, I've got to say. They've done a, a nice job on it. It arrives in the it's it, it arrived in the UK this week. Mm. Yeah, they, 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 they introduced two ways of playing it. So you've got the epic version, where which you can play two, four, six, or, or eight players, and then that's on a big, big board with the three sectors and all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but they've also put in the a, another version called like Grand Battle, which is eight players and it's on six segments of the battlefield. Now what? So that's a huge board then? Physically it's the same size. Well, it's a little bit bigger than the epic one, which is like two board sizes. Yeah. But um, yeah, basically each each commander has two sections to play with, so you can do a lot more. But uh, yeah, it's, it's really good. So... Um, Oh right, so so basically the epic set's got all the boards and the cards for Grand Battle and all that sort of thing then, yeah? There's no cards in it, no. You need the cards from the General and Tactics deck. Um but it's got <clears throat> it's got the, the two boards you need for Epic, it's got two boards that you need for the Grand Battle. Obviously more blocks to fill out, it's got the rules, it's got this thing called the Courier deck, where you have um command cards which are visible by both sides that each side takes one off per turn <clears throat> and can be played by the commander in chief or by any of the sub commanders and a few other things in there as well you know as you'd expect more dice and stuff so uh, yeah it's a good set heavy box big heavy box mm. there we go that's me so i've got another five million blocks to sticker <laughs> you love it really but of course it takes you longer because you do do both sides it, it does take me yeah. Yeah, twice as long yeah. <sighs> you don't do on one side it's much more practical no it's not <laughs> <laughs> this is heading rapidly for the same level of holy war as do you base 15 mil vehicles isn't it <laughs> you don't you do. it's quite simple you don't you don't it's base 15 mil vehicles oh yes you, you, do. Do. There you do there you do there you do, there you do. Look, you we ran a we ran a straw poll and you lost massively. Doesn't matter. Yeah, get over it. What My was it? About eighty two percent said no. You don't. It, they're all wrong. I knew no, I liked you for a reason. Uh, was, uh, no, uh, uh, can I suggest an alternative fact? <laughs> I was, I was going to say you can't you can't argue you can't argue with the democracy, but well. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, moving swiftly, moving on, swiftly yeah. on, indeed. I just want to say, we do the best bases. We do the best bases. Best bases. Yeah. 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 yeah, they're lovely bases, and that's great. Lovely. Yeah, yeah, great. Really good. Yeah. They're a mother of a base. Yeah, going to build a wall next week. Right, <laughs> Mr. Love, your turn. Um, Please, yeah. quickly. What, what, what have I been doing? Um, uh, actually, I've been uh, playing quite a bit of um, Sorcery, uh, Steve Jackson's Sorcery, which is, I think we've mentioned it before, was available on Steam. Uh, I bought it sometime around about Christmas, and uh, I'm sort of uh, halfway through the city car now. I am, so I'm on the second book. Uh, what else have we been doing? Uh, we played some Thunderbirds uh, the other week, mm-hmm. um, and, uh, well... We got beat very badly and then beat very badly again. And then we sort of realised we were playing the wrong tactics uh, and uh, we made a good fist of it on the final game. So that was quite good. Uh, we would, we were trying to um, maximise the chances of us succeeding in each mission, which is all very well, but uh, the problem is all the missions then start creeping up on you, so you, you're probably better off just to go and have a go, as it were. Yeah. It's um, very it's very time consuming to get everything in the right place at the right time, isn't it? Yeah, to totally maximise it, and we were we were playing the rock the tactics completely wrong, didn't we? And I sort of yeah <laughs> yeah pointed that out. I think we were playing it wrong, <laughs> really. So, yeah, so that second game was very good, actually. We came very close to 
to winning, but we didn't. We, didn't. we came very close. Yeah. Uh, it's a hard more... game, is it? Well, it's it, it's definitely a hard game when you're not playing the tactics right. <laughs> <laughs> it, it it was yeah the way we were playing it. I think it was more than just hard. And then uh, we played uh, Command and Colors with the uh, tactics cards the other day uh, correctly for a change. Uh, after our run the other day, the, well, the week previous, where we'd got it completely wrong, mm. um, and it makes it makes it quite interesting, uh, uh, especially when Neil pulls out a card, cavalry charge. Um, what was it? Break, break, square. Uh, it? it was it was cavalry charge and break the square. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dave, <laughs> Dave, let it go, mate. Let it go. Yeah, Neil goes, ah, oh, it's all right, it's all right, there's not many of them, there can't be, there's only one in the deck. And then I pulled one out that following turn, didn't I? You did. <laughs> except except you then managed to go go one better than me and managed to kill two units rather than one. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But mm. we're still looking historically into that anyway, so if anyone's got any uh, good source information to tell us about... Uh, Ca- cavalry alone, so not combined arms, but cavalry alone breaking a formed infantry square. Uh, please do pass it on to us. I, I forget who commented. Uh, somebody on Twitter, I think it was on Twitter, did kind of did mention that they believed it happened four times throughout the war. So, so there's way too many. There's way too many of those cards in the deck. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it's a big deck, and the chances of both of them coming out in a game, especially when you. Know, you don't actually draw that many tactics cards in, in during a game. It just sounds like you didn't shuffle properly. Yeah, I blame <laughs> Neil. It was Neil. Yeah. Neil was shuffling. And of course, well, yeah, part, shuffling part, machine. Of the, part of the thing is how you define a broken square. I mean, one of the things we will be discussing next week with our guest. <laughs> That's not going to work, is it? Um, <clears throat> sometimes it's not a question of the square broken. It's a question of the square never formed properly in the first place. Yeah. And, and, and then you get what's the classic? The Battle of Garcia Hernandez, just after Salamanca, where it would have worked fine were it not for the fact that a mortally wounded horse at full gallop fell into the square. Yeah, and yeah, hole. yeah. I found, I found, like, yeah, I mean, like, I found that source for that one. Yeah, there's a few. Uh, there's not many, and and I suspect that there's not. That, yeah, yeah, as many of the stories are actually not a case of the square broke as we got too cocky about how long it would take us to form square in the first place. Yeah, I can't, I can't, I mean, there must be one or two at least, like Neil says, he reckons it's almost says four, but I haven't actually been able to find any clear source material of of, of, of an infantry square that was formed breaking without something freak happening, you know, like a, a horse, you know, went ploughing into the, you know, and took yeah, half, and I think half, that half the side of the square case. out or something like that. I haven't I haven't found anything out apart from, yeah. you know, something like that happening. So the question really is, do you treat that card as genuinely broken the square or as something freak happened or the square wasn't as well formed as you thought it was? Yeah. yeah. Take it out of yeah. the deck and say, sorry. Yeah, yeah. But, Take it. Did you win the game? Yeah. It doesn't matter then. I, only, ju- only just though. I knew. Oh, uh, well, it was five. It was five. I, I mean, and to be fair, to be fair, that first uh, uh, the, the first scenario in in the in the core game. I mean, you know, the French are on a harding to nothing. I, I would be. I, I would be interested. Oh. I would be interested to see what the winning and losing percentages on that game. I, 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 have, I have to say. But yes, oh, I lost. Happened the last time you said that, don't you? Uh, yeah, it, it turned out that uh, the battle I was fighting, the French won most of the time, and I managed to lose it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because like, I think last time you said that, we swapped over. <laughs> uh, yes, <laughs> and then I lost horribly as a British. Yes, I know. <laughs> Maybe there's a thing going on here. I don't know. I don't know. But oh, um, poor Neil. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it was a uh, s- certainly tactics cards changed the game because they uh, interact so well with the regular gaming cards, for want of a better word. It just it just just brings a whole new uh, dynamic, doesn't it? Because a lot of these tactics cards they cannot be activated with just about any card that you're using at any one time, but. You, you like you're looking through your hand and like going well you know which is the best card to marry it up with, which which I found quite interesting. Yeah, 
But still suffice it to say, the next time Mr. Lewis sees Mr. Borg, he's going to have a word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's what you said to me, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, dear, I don't know now. <laughs> that's right, wasn't it? You said, oh, I think I need to have a word with this guy. <laughs> You're trying to land me, innit? You are. Because, <laughs> of course, he listens to us, doesn't he? Uh, yeah. yeah, you don't know. You don't know. Uh, I heard Prince Philip's a keen listener. So, Mike, <laughs> I'm saying we are going rapidly downhill here. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, my turn. moving on. <laughs> so, what have I done this week? Um, we've play tested the club's contribution to Hammerhead. It's a Peterborough War Games Club game. Need I say more? Oh, right, okay. You may recognise the golden pyramid from the. Combat archaeologist of the Deutsche Afrika call from a few years ago. There's a whole bunch of um, uh, Inca tribesmen and um, co- conquistadors, I think they are. Anyway, I wasn't paying too close attention. And the rules may look very similar to Games Workshop's Lost Patrol in places. But you couldn't possibly comment. But I couldn't possibly comment. It, it's fun. It, it looks like a quite one of one of our nice little fun mess around for, for half an hour, throw lots of dice, have lots of fun, go on and join the rest and go off and enjoy the rest of the show, which is kind of how these things should be, I think. Um, so that's pretty much the gaming for the week. Shopping wise, um I found a copy of Return to Hoth. Oh cool. Uh, on Firestorm of all places. It it does it does it's seem shopping. that that it does seem a new that the Perhaps a new uh, a new, a new battery ride right in the country. Yeah. Yes. There were about half a dozen on Amazon. Somebody on one of the board games communities on Facebook posted to say Firestorm have some in stock. Um, and by the time I got there, there was exactly one left, so I bought it. Then told Hobbsy. <laughs> it's okay. I, I don't need it. I'm, I'm going to stick to Tatooine and desert um, places. <laughs> That's your story. Right. You're sticking to it. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, last time I looked, Magic Madhouse still had some. Oh, cool. So, so you know, they but might thereby, like, thereby hangs another tale for later. Indeed, yeah. <laughs> um, what else? Um, I got given two painted 15 mil Shermans. Ooh. Uh, mostly because um, um, Gary at the club got some of my Fireforge Templars a while back and he had, we hadn't quite agreed what he was going to pay me for, pay, pay me for them with and he had a couple of spare 15 mil Shermans, so I now have two more Shermans than I used to, which is always handy. You can never have enough Shermans. They're like sort of Panzer Falls and Stugs. They're uh, absolutely blooming everywhere. So prepping up for a game of sharp practice down the club, which means the 3D printer will be busy over... The, not sharp practice, what am I saying? Prepping up for a game of I Ain't Been Shot Mode down the club, for which the 3D printer will be busy to make some little Sabo bases for the big men. Uh, I've been, for those who are following my blog... I've done a lot of little base edge labels for the Flames of War bases. You know how they're slant at 45 degrees? Oh, about yeah. four or five millimetre back edge on them that you can stick a little thing on with a national flag and a, a platoon number, which makes it much easier to find them when you draw the card. Problem is you can't do this with big men because I base my big men on pennies and tuppences and there isn't enough space on the edge of them. So I've 3D printed this little thing, which is basically a, a little Savo base into which the the big man fits, so the, the penny or the tuppence fits, and instead of being circular, it's got a little squared off back with a sloping sloping face on it that you can stick a label to which says German big man one. Which has the great advantage that if you're like me and your big men are their level is governed by the number of figures on your base and allied big man one changes from being a level three big man to a level two big man, you just swap the figure out. So I was quite pleased with those. Uh, once I've got the kinks ironed out on the printing They'll probably be available to buy from PE2 collectibles or somebody if anybody wants to buy them, or they can commission me to print them some. If they find them useful, they'll also, of course, be useful for sharp practice, where you can do the same thing. Ooh. Well, there you go. I thought so. Um, other than that, um, I have a little 3D print commission from Gary, in that he has a Warlord Games 28mm Whirlwind, the the Quad 20 Panzer IV Flak, yes. to be. Um, and he wants an Ostwind turret for it. Because it's exactly the same chassis, exactly the same turret mount, and he's got a spare 37mm for the Ostwind. It's a completely different t- shaped turret, so I'm 
currently working on doing a re-edit of Marcus Bergman's one two hundredth scale Ostwind, blowing it up to one fifty sixth, um, and then just cleaning it up because it'll be far too fat and fat and ugly at yeah. one fifty six. So it'll need some tidying up, and then just swapping off the his style of turret mount for the uh, for the for the Warlord one, and hopefully. That's going to be a little bit of a trickier project than just printing him a challenger, which was my last job. So that should keep me out of mischief for a bit. I was looking, quite looking forward to that. It's quite a fun little challenge. Cool. Um, um, painting? 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 Oh, uh, yes. Um, no. Um, sort of. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, the stuff that I've been using for painting all the Total Battle, Min- Battle Miniatures flexible roads and stuff was left out on the kitchen side and the cat managed to knock over cat managed to indirectly knock over a large pot of Santex. I am not in the wife's good books. Ooh. 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 Yeah. Particularly since the damn stuff had been sitting for sufficiently long that it hadn't it had started to separate. As it does. It needs it, need, it was in need of a really good stir, which I think meant it was slightly even more liquid when when the when the tin tin leaked. So yeah, I'm not in the wife's good books at the moment. Oh, not good. Not good. Uh, other than that, no, I think that's about it, really. Um, talking to you lot, spending far too much time down in London on training courses. Um, got a gig with the band on Sunday. That's about it, really. Cool. Right. Okay. Uh, me, me, me. Well, you've heard about our gaming exploits this week. Uh, yes, losing a game at Command and Colors Napoleonics. I did sit down and uh, on the following day, and rather I nearly put put a spreadsheet together with uh, all the battles from actually the six expansions because I included the Austerlitz battles as well uh, because they were online and put together a spreadsheet to say right okay if um, if you wanted to fight all the battles in order here they all here they all were did you know there's like wouldn't you get all the boxes I mean excluding the epic okay uh, or they. I suppose you can add in the, the six scenarios for Austerlitz and that. There's like 116 battles to fight. He was a busy little lad, wasn't he, old, old Napoleon? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that should keep us going for that should keep us going for a couple of weeks, Mister Love. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> I think on top of that, it's like bloody, well, all that we got all the ancient stuff. It's like you could just play Commander Colors for like you know. Four years, <laughs> solid. <laughs> anyway, oh, I've said for years that Commander uh, Colors is probably the best value war game stroke board game out there. Value for money, it's massive. Mm. Yeah, so so I did that anyway, anyway. Anyway, but so that's what we played. Uh, have I bought anything? A um, couple of bits and pieces. Uh, did, haven't bought any models, but uh, bought a couple of sets of rules. Bought a copy of uh, um, Over the Hills, uh, more of which next week. And uh, depending on it, a set of rules. Uh, also, Peter Pig uh, brought out a new version of their Men of Company B Vietnam rules. Uh, so I picked those up on pre-order, uh, and they arrived. They arrived this week. So I'm gonna have uh, because it, yeah, it's it's Vietnam. And since I'm a sucker for Vietnam rules, I look at that, uh, uh, pick those up, give them a look, uh, give them a look over. 15 mil Vietnam, Mr. Hobbs. Mm. Mm, yeah. So if you, you know anybody's got 15 mil Vietnam figures, uh, I'm just wondering if they'll, if they'll convert to 10 I'm sure they'll convert to 10. Excuse me, I'm sure they'll convert to 10 mil. Yeah. yeah okay. <clears throat> or I might just, might, I mean, I don't know, because somebody's been trying to convince me to do 15 mil Vietnam as well as anything else. Haven't you? It's weird. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. All right. <laughs> so, so. Uh, oh, and the the other thing I bought was uh, was something tad different. Uh, bought a new camera mount for my camera. Basically, one of these uh, multi pose handheld camera jigs, uh, which I am going to. Uh, give it a try at the, uh, uh Sunday's, uh, brand new show called Robin. Uh, funnily enough, it's in, it's at the Nottingham Tennis Centre. This is, it's on the 12th of February. Okay. And I had this crazy idea of, uh, looking at this, uh, look at this camera mount, which you could put it up so it's, so it, it almost operates a little bit like a steady cam mount. 
okay, you haven't got the ball, you know, you haven't got the ball joint on it, you know, for, uh, uh, but it's relatively close. And I thought, you know how a lot of the time you get pictures of games, but you don't tend to get a lot of chance to kind of, you know, look around them or what have you. I thought, let's take some videos of some games. So I'm going to take some videos, uh, I'm going to give it a go, take some video of the display games that have got at Robin and put them up on the blog and just see how it works and see what it looks like because a lot of the shows we go to have some really good looking demo games and it's it's whilst it's nice to see loads of pictures of games uh, actually if you then get a video tour of a game table yeah like you know go around the table and then maybe uh, you know go up the middle and have a look in various buildings and all that sort of oh, yeah, yeah just kind of a kind of a flyby of a gaming table might be alright might it might look good I think sounds like a plan so I'm going to give that a go so uh, bought one of those this week so uh, all being well, uh, that will as long as long as it all comes out, they will appear on the blog when I do a report from Robin. That's about all I bought this week. Painting uh, finished my next uh, helix for uh, Planetfall, so I now have four painted helixes for Planetfall. Uh, so I finished my Grand Command helix. Uh, had a slight accident, well, accident-ish, uh, when uh, the Terran Command Barge, which is this huge piece of uh, of resin, most of the vehicles in in Planet Fall come very sensibly already attached to their bases, uh, but this particular one doesn't, and so I, I painted I painted it separately, uh, and then I went and glued it to the, I went and uh, glued it to the base. And came down the following morning, and where I'd glued it to the base and stuff, uh, I got this white film where the um, I don't know what what had happened to the super glue, but I had the uh, but it, 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 but it turned part it turned part of the paint job white. I was like, oh, what is it with you turning paint jobs white? So annoying. It seems like you're always doing it. Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. If it isn't, yeah, if it isn't super glue, it's varnish. Oh, oh. Anyway, so um, I'm, I'm still kind of, uh, uh, still kind of trying to repair that. So uh, it looks like I'm going to repaint, uh, repaint some bits of it. But generally, uh, I started that, and I've started, and I've started my next core helix as well. So I'm painting's progressing quite well at the moment. It's doing all right. You see, I do paint stuff, Mister Love. Yeah, yeah. You, you probably you've painted more this year than I have. Uh, well, uh, 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 shock and indeed horror, but it is, of course, true. But of course, you turn around and say, "Well, you haven't painted anything real because all you've been doing is painting sci-fi." <laughs> I thought you were going to say so that I've only been painting one to one, so that's why I've been painting real stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I'm just, yeah, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting for the point where, you used to, yeah, because you're so used to painting one to one, you start trying to paint your 15 mil stuff with a two inch brush. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. The tin of trade Dulux. <laughs> Other paints are available. Oh. Yeah. Do they do it in? Um, do they do it in orange wrap? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. I, well, I could get any colour made up actually. So, yeah. But there we go. You can just get all your trade acrylics. I mean, you know. There's a market there somewhere, surely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> moving about, on. Moving on. I think that about covers everybody, doesn't it? Think so. Think so. Cool. Right, in that case then, we will we'll take a quick break. And when we come back, we will be chatting with Andy Cooper from Westwind. This is a message from The Cranky Lawyer. Huzzah! Please plan to join us for three great days of the best our hobby has to offer. Beautiful tabletops, challenging scenarios, board games, a wonderful variety of gaming-related shopping, and great company. Huzzah! May 19th to the 21st, 2017, South Portland, Maine. 
miniatures games, board games, tournaments, vendors, raffle and great company. Join us for three days of fun. If you want to learn more about shoutouts, visit our Patreon page. The link is on the website. I hope that you're enjoying this episode of the Meeples and Miniatures podcast. If you are, would you like to support us? There's a couple of ways of doing so. You can become a patron of the show by supporting us on our Patreon page. There you can give regularly every time we produce a show. Alternatively, you may want to give a one-off donation, and you can do that by using PayPal. For more details on both these options, please click on the Donate tab on our website www.meeplesandminiatures.co.uk Have you ever wondered what's going on in Wargaming? We do too. So come with us as we go behind the hobby with the Meeples and Miniatures interview. We're very pleased to welcome back to the Meeples and Miniatures podcast... It's Andy Cooper from Westwind. Hello, Andy. How you doing, mate? Hi, guys. I'm not so bad. I'm not so bad at all. Ah, oh, great to speak to you again. It's been a while, yeah. yeah. It has. It has been a while. You've. It, it, yes. It seems that um, Westwind have been a little quiet. Quiet. What have you been oh, doing with yourself? Oh, West, <laughs> yeah. Westwind's been quiet, but the other branch of the uh, operation, Forge and Battle, has been so busy. It's been insane. So. That's where we've been. <laughs> right. Okay, because obviously, I mean, I think the last time we talked, we uh, it was actually about um, em- uh, the the Roman Empire stuff you were doing, wasn't it? Second yeah, first, War uh, 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 part two. Yeah, that was it. War Empire Part Two, which was first, second, and third century Rome, and then everything kind of associated with it because it kind of went mad, didn't it? It did. Yeah, a lot of armies. Yeah. <laughs> And a lot of miniatures again. I see. So it's, it's, it's this imperial thing, you know. Once you give them, a, give them an eagle, that's it. They want the world. So yeah, we've yeah. been busy doing that for the last. Well, when did we run the Kickstarter last Christmas? So it's like twelve months. It's taken us. But the reason for that is after we'd run the Kickstarter, people just kept coming. Just kept buying more and more stuff so we were getting, we were never caught up and at some stage we just had to sort of go hang on <laughs> we just got to stop now and, and supply everybody with the, the, the stuff because their orders were kind of going to double if you know what I mean yeah it was it, it's a good headache to have but we weren't getting on with doing any any other parts of the, the business sorry about that Andy uh, that, that might be me I kind of added a fair few things to my to my Kickstarter pledge. Is that might, yeah, I might. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> a lot of people did, especially people in Australia for some reason. I don't know why that was, but they did. All right. All right. So it's one of these things of okay, you got to the end of the Kickstarter and you thought, and you had your orders and thought, yeah, okay, yeah, that's doable. And then by the time you got to the end of your pledge manager, yeah, we were swamped. Yeah, completely swamped. You know, it's like 12 months of manufacturing and, well, it's a good, like I say, it's a good problem to have, but it doesn't allow us to develop, to, you know, we can't do justice to anything else at the same time. It's just not possible. Hmm. We couldn't yeah. manufacture it, you see. So if we had another success at the same time, we'd really fall down on our faces. And we'd rather just 
stick to what we know, you know, stick to what we said we're going to do and do it as best we can and then move on to the next project and do the same sort of thing. We don't like to have projects on top of projects. Yeah, well, well yeah, and I, I suppose especially with the fact that you, know, you, you look around and, and just saw the amount of manufacturing you had in front of you. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and let's face it, West Wind isn't exactly the biggest company in the world, is it? No, there's only there's only like four four guys work there, so <laughs> it's not it's not that easy to for us to sort of like turn it turn another project around at the same time, or even sustain things that we've already got in the air, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, and let yeah, you know, and yeah, and let's face it, you know, you, you you need to be unchained from your desk for you know the odd holiday and you know Christmas and stuff, don't you? <laughs> no one again, yeah, no one again. But I have been busy. I have been busy in the background, you know. I've been building that. I've been making, playing with little Panzer mech things and stuff, you know. Okay, let's go. Okay, yeah, yeah, teasers. Yeah, yeah. Let's come back to that just in just one second. So, okay. um, if people have been following the hobby news, uh, they will no- have noticed in the last week that all of a sudden the, the, a rather large range of miniatures has materialised on the Forged in Battle website. Yeah. So. Which is the uh, uh, which, uh, this which is this second um, the second half of War and Empire? So exactly how many new armies are there? Oh, lots and lots and lots and lots. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, off the top is of that a rough estimate? Okay, <laughs> okay, we got Rome, so we got the Romans, and we covered everything from. Um, so we ended the first Kickstarter with the uh, Caesarian Romans, so we picked it up with um, you know, um, Augustine, and then we do first century. And then we covered second century, and then during the Kickstarter, people wanted third century, so we sort of ended on third century. And then we've got the enemies of the, the Romans, so we've got uh, Sassanids, and we've got the Franks, the Saxons, the Goths, the Ostrogoths, the Vandals. Uh, we've got the Blemy, the Picts, and anything else that I can't remember off the top of my head. I'd have to have a look at the list, but there's, there are other armies as well. <clears throat> oh, Maccabean well. Jewish, which we sort of like, which was actually um, something that sort of came over from the first Kickstarter that we still sort of had. And it's all, I like Maccabean Jewish. I don't know why, I just do. It's got to be a Monty Python thing. <laughs> I wasn't going to go there, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh right, so, uh, uh, yeah. So, so, so obviously, it's been it's been head head down and go on a whole load of sculpting, which is kind of why we haven't heard an awful. It doesn't seem we we've heard an awful lot from you over the last. I'd say best part of like you know nine months to a year, I suppose. Oh yeah, it? it's got to it's got to be a year. Yeah, it's got to be a year. Got to be. Oh, Dacians as well. Just looked at my own website, Dacians. <laughs> Mr. Dacians and the Scots Irish on the list. Yeah, it's been about, yeah, it's been a year. But I, I mean, I finished my part of War and Empire ooh, sort of in the summer. Hmm. And I've been working on Panzermech since, since then. All right, so you've been, so you've been beaving away in the background whilst all the manufacturing has been going on, yeah? That's right, yeah. Yeah, because that, that's not my, my thing. I don't hmm. do that bit. So you, so you said you you basically got to the point where you had to turn out to people and say, can you, "Excuse me, can you please stop ordering stuff?" Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I, I take it then you've you shipped an awful lot of product around the world. Oh man, yeah, a lot. <laughs> yeah, we did, we did a lot of stuff. Cool. I think it, I think when we work it out, it, it's close to three hundred thousand miniatures. Oh my word. <laughs> Flipping yeah. <laughs> neck. Yeah. Could I just say though that with Westwind, every single Kickstarter I've had of you, Andy, and I think I've had three or four of you, it all arrives well packaged, all together, no damage. It's fantastic. I I, I love getting my Westwind boxes once a year, <laughs> just full of good <laughs> goodies. Well, that's down to Wendy and that's down to Wendy and Lee. Mm. So that- Top drawer yeah. in the office. Yeah. And thing. all I can say is that if I did ancients in fifteen mil, you would make me a very, very poor man. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly, fortunately, I nailed my flight to twenty eight before before this lot came around. Otherwise, okay. I would be I would be flat broke because these enough. are gorgeous. Mike, you should look at them, mate. Go on, just just get one little packet. I tell you what. 
I'll send you a packet, Mike, and you just tell me what you think of it. You're an evil man, obviously. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm looking. I must admit. Uh, Fantastic. They really are. I think I've got four. What do you like, guys? Yeah. I mean, it'll put a lot of work into them. You know, I mean, I think it's possibly the biggest ancient range now, I would imagine. I mean, we haven't done Dark Ages yet. No. Uh, as I say, I, say, I, I was, I, I was going to. That was always preempting my next question. Is like, as far as War and Empire is concerned, I suppose it's like. I, I mean, I, I mean, admittedly, having just spent a year doing it, I, I, I dare say you kind of want to break and do something else. But uh, is that something, something you're going to come back to in the, in the near future? Okay, if you were on the kicks that Mike, you were on, you you might have got an update that showed you some of the stuff that we sort of got in the pipeline. That's if you keep on top of your updates. Um, yes. Um, Did you see the late Romans and the Romano-British and things? I, I may have done, but I've been sworn to secrecy because, you know, obviously Kickstarters, you know, you, you oh, right. can't be Fair spending enough. these things around. But, yeah, I did look at them and go, oh. I'm, I mean, for me, I, I'm really hoping you get to um, Byzantium. I mean, that's, that's the one that will just financially Oops. cripple me. Yeah, well, we I'm, sa- I'm safe. No Parthians yet. No Parthians? No Parthians? There are a few Parthians. I'm sure there are some Parthians. Yeah, there's, there's some Parthian horse archers and stuff. I've made some Parthians, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sorry. Anyway, we'll, we'll have to go back and have a, a check, double check on that one. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not sure if I'm not sure if there's a full part. I mean, I'm certainly, I think I'm certainly, certainly spotted some horse archers. I'm not quite sure if there's a whole part. Archers, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I was looking at it for um, uh, Mortimer Glorium. And uh, I was uh, having chatted with Simon Hall, thinking, I suppose I have to get a 15 mil ancient army now. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> I was like, W E P A O 1 Parthian cataphracts, W E P A O 2 Parthian horse archers. I'm doomed. Yep. <laughs> They're very nice. <laughs> They're all Not much stuff. I have to refer to my own website to check up on what one have actually got. <laughs> Do a search on it because it's like literally hundreds and hundreds of codes. Anyway, getting back to what we've got planned for War and Empire, the next phase, which won't be for at least six to eight months, is Dark Ages, uh, Byzantium, uh, Arab Conquest, all that kind of stuff. So we're sort of moving forward in history. So we're going to go up through connecting. So we're going to do late Romans, Huns, and then we're going to move on to early Byzantines and then all that kind of stuff uh, up into the Viking Saxons. Are you going to do things like early Saxons? and? Well, yeah, well, we've already got Saxons, um, is it, but we might just add a few packs of heavier armed guys to that. Right. We've got Saxons already. Because a lot of it, I, I look at it and I go, well, that actually just looks like the Saxons from the, the Saxons we did for the sort of third century stuff. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's sort of hairy bloke, hairy bloke with chainmail and shield, isn't it? But lots and lots of hairy subtle guys. variants in Don. Yeah. We'll probably do some for the Romano British, actually. So we'll probably do some Saxon stuff for that, early Saxon stuff for that. So I know some, I know nice. some folks who do Duxbury in fifteen mil have been going for that. I, suspect. I wish I hadn't looked at these now. Put the credit card away. <laughs> Indeed. Ooh, they're nice. Yes. Uh, yes, I so... Like warn you. Uh, you, know, <laughs> you, you tried to warn me by threatening to send me a pack of figures. I don't consider that much of a warning. More yeah, enabling. Just, well, yeah. Okay. I'm an enabler. Yeah. Okay, so... Okay, so, so basically we're moving forward into the Dark Ages next. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, not, but not for a while. No, we've actually got some prototypes, but I've got quite a lot of it done, actually. Um, so hopefully the next time around we'll, we'll have a lot more of the miniatures actually done before we even commence with the thing. So I've got a lot of um, Saxon Huskals and Viking Huskals and things like that done. Because I want to do, I want to really want to go to town on, on that sort of stuff. So if I start early, I can make more variants and more different, you know, different guys. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so... Now, one thing I must admit I've, I've lost track of is where we are with the rules. Okay. Rules are almost ready to lay out. Now, we had, I've had the second meeting with the guys, right, the rules, Anthony. 
that was last weekend and we went through and did some the basics you know um make sure it makes sense when you read the phrase out kind of stuff because we know what the rule you, you know what it's like when you write rules it makes sense to you when you write it down when somebody else reads it they're kind of like well that doesn't really that's not good english you know that doesn't actually say what you mean it to say so that's where yeah. we are with that as soon as we've got that you know, there's a, I think we went to about 20 pages left to check, and once we've got that, we're ready to go to uh, lay it out and get it printed. Cool. So, when are we potentially looking at that for a release? Oh, well, it takes about six weeks to get the thing uh, laid out, and then maybe another six weeks to get that printed because it's got to go off. And that goes to Lithuania as well. Talking about Lithuania earlier, or did we? <laughs> uh. Not on the podcast. Oh, we didn't actually. No, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that was before we started recording. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, but we yeah. will have. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, oh, so, oh, so, uh, so they're getting printed, printed in, in Lithuania, uh, and uh, okay, so we're looking at. Uh, are they going to be around in time for salute, or is salute just that little bit too early? No, it'd be too early. Too early, definitely. I could say yes, but last time that we had put printed in Lithuania, the guy who was like bringing them over got arrested for some reason and didn't turn up, so they had to send a replacement driver. <laughs> so there was like another week. So stuff happens. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but it's not as bad as China, you know. At least uh, you know your boat don't sink. That's not too bad, I suppose. Okay, so we're looking at, uh, yeah, so we're probably looking at May, June time then, yeah? Yeah, I would have thought so, yeah. But the good news is it's had a lot of play testing, so, you know, it's looking good. Cool. Uh, so, so I dare say it's, it's kind of changed completely from where we were first time around when we were talking about this. Oh, this is the third incarnation of the rule. You know, we broke it down twice. So this is the third author. Because <laughs> we just weren't happy with the way it was playing out. I mean, it kept parts of the actual system each time, but, you know, it was kind of like, hmm, well, that's not really... We wanted to do something different, you know? And we think yeah. it is different, so that's where that is up to. <laughs> Cool. And before we go on to West Wind, let's stay with Forged in Battle for a minute. So obviously, one of the other major, uh, or, or the, um, uh, the other major part of Forged in Battle is, it, it currently is World War Two. Mm. Um, now, you were back in the, well, th- through the year, you were feeding up, uh, uh, feeding updates and putting out new models for, uh, North Africa. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, I mean, is that continuing on? I mean, yeah, um, how, how's that sort of thing coming? Okay, well, I think we've sort of covered our North Africa stuff for the time being. Um, but what we've got coming up for 15 of World War II... Is... I was going to say, so North Africa, so no Italians then? Uh, not planned, no. Oh. Not currently planned, Italians. Sorry, Neil. Did you want Italians? Uh, well, it was it was it was it was a thought. <laughs> <laughs> That's something a bit different. <laughs> well, uh, not currently, not currently. Oh, I, 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 sorry, I've just twigged what I just twigged what you're going to tease us with because I remember seeing some of these at Salute. Oh right, okay. Well, Go we on. Do got, we got some stuff. I mean, we've got uh, we've got Japanese mm. and US Marine Corps coming up. Um, now, they, we've had the infantry and stuff along quite a while, actually, probably six months, and we've been waiting on the tanks, because the tanks things t- take time. So, tank-wise, we've kind of got um, Chiha and all that kind of stuff, and all the standard stuff. We've got artillery for the Japanese, um, we've got the Amtrak stuff, you know, the the landing stuff um, for the Marines, and... Yeah, oh, cool, I'm trying to, yeah, things like that, that, the buffaloes and all that sort of stuff, yeah? L- LVTs, yeah, I just yeah. don't remember what it is. And then, Pat, so we've got that lot, um, we've got those are sort of in the bag, so to speak, and then after that we've got kind of a bit mixed here, actually, so we've got like things like a Waffen Trager for like, you know, for the really late war stuff, um, we've got some German self-propelled guns come in, some more Stug versions, um, some Russian self-propelled stuff, 
A Nash Horn. Got a Nash Horn. Jab oh, Tiger. Cool. Got a Jab Tiger. And we've got Tiger P. And we've got a... What else? Sturm Tiger. Got a Sturm Tiger. <laughs> yeah, because everybody needs one of them, don't they? <laughs> everybody needs a Sturm Tiger. It's like, not, not, let me in. You know? <laughs> Um, oh yeah, we've got the toy toys. That's the nine forty six kind of thing. Yeah. Um, that's the toy toys. What would you call that? A siege tank or a, you know, the huge, great, big thing? It's yeah. A thing for breaking through fortifications. Um, we've got a series of the. We've got white scope cars with all bits and pieces on those. Um, oh, cool. Half track yeah. and like that. Um, yeah, cause, yeah, cause I mean things like I mean things like like yeah, stupid stupid things like you know, like a white scout car, for example, is very difficult to get hold of. I, I, I only think one or two people make it. And, yeah, uh, well, that's right. Yeah, we do know we we've actually that should be in our next release actually for vehicles. Um, we've got M three one hundred five HMC seventy five millimeter HMC the scout car and the CGMC self propelled anti aircraft. So those are all the versions built on either the half track or the, the white scout car chassis. Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, we've got what else? We've got oh yeah, Jad Pag- Jad Panther Two. So that's kind of for for a nineteen forty six range as well, which is an awesome tank if you've ever played World of Tanks. <laughs> <laughs> so with the fact actually uh, because you do all this nice, uh, well, you, I mean you've got several nineteen forty six style tanks in especially in your German vehicle range now mm. uh, are you looking at maybe moving into something like that with uh, 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 with you know infa- uh, 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 with infantry I mean almost I suppose almost you could think going secret to the third like 15 mil I couldn't possibly say <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if you, yes, thought, yes, if you thought I drew a line and went, oh well, possibly in the future that might be something that we would look at. Um, it would depend, obviously, on another project that we've got coming up. But it's a very distinct possibility, isn't it? Yeah. But maybe uh, I think with 1946, what we wanted to look at was um, maybe a game that used actual was set in 1946 and used jets and things like that and uh, used the late, really late, weirdy, not weird, but, um, you know, the E-series stuff for the Germans and all that kind of yeah. stuff that they were getting into. And Cause... like you say, the infantry would be more, ooh, how would they be equipped, do you think? Um, assault rifles, grenades and stuff. Well, the Germans would have a lot of the, is it SG-44? The, the yeah, little... yeah. Yeah. Yeager, assault rifle. The British would have the Centurion. They would, yeah. Which is interesting. Yeah. Mm. Early Centurion tank, yeah. And they because they actually made it out as far as Germany, but they never never saw service, as I understand it. Oh right, okay, cool, cool. And at, at a stretch, we could possibly push that Enfield bullpup on the infantry. Have you ever seen that? The one that looks like the modern British rifle. Oh, 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 yeah, I think I know what you mean. Yes. I think they developed it in 1950, but, you know, hmm. nah, you know, 1946, squeeze it in there. Proto- <laughs> it prototype, maybe, maybe, prototype, yes. Yeah. Yes. Ooh, 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 interesting. Mm. Yeah, but, yeah, so going back to, going back to your, yeah, your, your Pacific War stuff, I mean, yes, I remember you, I remember you showing us, uh, some of the samurai at, uh, at Salute. It's like, uh, not, not samurai. It was because, sorry, it included, it included a Japanese officer who was just superb. Uh, but yeah, I, I remember you showing us some of the Japanese and Marines at, uh, at Salute and, uh, oh, oh, they're nice. Well, they've fallen victim to the ancients. So, same sort of curse. You know, they're too successful. <laughs> and yes. and, and the, the only solution for us would be to take more staff off. Now, I don't like to do but take more staff on. I don't like to do that because it it just causes a cash flow problem later in the year. So I'd rather just struggle with the you know, and just release things as we manage to release them. Yeah. Yeah. I, <clears throat> okay, so the inevitable question can you tease us on release dates? For what 
for uh, so, so for for the Pacific War stuff. Oh, the Pacific stuff. We might be looking at a mini Kickstarter for that to get it all out at the same time. Right. Oh, but I can't give you a definite date, but it, it'll be it'll be it's good. You know, it's good for everybody that because everybody gets it at a pretty nice price. <clears throat> what do you think? You think that's a good idea? Uh, I think that's I think I think that's a terrible idea because <laughs> uh, I mean it's uh, uh, oh dear I mean we've been talking on, on the odd occasion I mean, uh, about yeah doing things and you know and, and the, I mean yeah Pacific War is, is something of a neglected period and uh, uh, but Desperate. having said that if you have another period maybe slightly you know m- maybe slightly later in the, in in world history where you're playing in Asia. In fifteen mil, uh, it's not much of a stretch, is it, Mister Hobbs? Uh, I'm I'm saying nothing and just um, checking my bank balance. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both, mate. Obviously, um, once you've got Vietnam terrain, really yeah, that, yeah, stretch, that, yeah, the, yeah, that's that's kind of where we were going, mate. Yeah, yeah, I sort of like, figured that, like, but yeah, like, um, oh dear um, me, I've, I've always uh, wanted to do the Pacific, and I think. Uh, Using chain of command as well. But I'd use Iron Bean Shot One, but it is woefully underrepresented. Mm. It is. I mean, the 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 obvious elephant in the room, Battlefront, do almost nothing, and they don't push it at all. So, so yeah, get there, get get, get in there. Yeah, 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 sounds like a good idea. Well, that that kind of plan. Brilliant. Oh right, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, we're in on that one, right? So, okay. okay, so that's three customers. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, obviously... it, it, you see, the thing with the Kickstarter is it allows us then to sort of go, well, actually, here's this obscure Japanese top propelled gun that we wouldn't normally make, but if we get raised enough funds, the money's there to actually do the thing, and we will have it. Mm. Mm. It's a, you know, or a weird American thing, you know, like the um, the trucks with the rockets on and things like that. But do terrain as well, uh, Andy. Do 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 bunkers. Bunkers and things, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. well, if we can get some plans, bunker plans, we can just get them three D printed designs because the guy can work off three D mm. design, so they will actually be exactly, exactly the same. Yeah, or, or just a bit of a mountain with, with a little hole in there. You know, yeah, a big pile of rocks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <sighs> And you've, yeah. you've got to do a vignette for the Guadalcanal flag figure as well. Oh, um, I don't want them already. Oh, well, there you go, then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not, not giving anything that. away, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Just test it off, mate, and bring it out to you. That'd um, be good. Airfields. Oh, sorry. Yeah, blowing up planes and stuff like that in 15. No, well, they look pretty neat, wouldn't they? Oh, yeah. Just, just, yeah, just, just, just listen just a to bit. a bunch of kids with new toys. Yeah. All goes with John Wayne on it. <laughs> so when you say mini Kickstarter, you actually mean a massive one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go. This is what happens, you see. It's kind of like a snowball. You, you have an idea, and it's kind of, and everybody feeds into it, and it becomes a bigger and bigger snowball, mm. which is good <laughs> and bad. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, well, shall we, shall we move on? Because obviously, I mean, this is so, so that so, so that so that is the ghost of Kickstarter still to come. Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, indeed. Uh, but l- let's go back to uh, obviously what you just announced and what's been flying flying around the hobby news for the last week with this um, these these teasers. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. We, teasers we for. Um, for a brand new kick, uh, for, for a brand new Kickstarter, please yeah. tell us more. It's a, it's Weird World War Two. It's called Panzer Mech, and it's miniatures. Yeah, it's not for the rules this time. So we've basically separated the two, and we're going to concentrate on the miniatures. And mm. what we want to get into is we want to get into three D printing in a big way with uh, the mech design and the um, machines, and that's what the Kickstarter is about. Right, because obviously, in because it's, it's obviously this is linked with Secret of the uh, Secret of the Third Reich, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, because because uh, you did a couple of mechs in the past for that, didn't you? Oh, there's quite a few mechs. Yeah, there's um, mm. there's a German, there is a Panzer mech originally, and that I made that about ten years ago. 
And then there's things like the RAT for the British, which is the uh, modern transport mech. And then there's the Russian spider mechs. I don't know if you've seen those. Those are cool. Mm. And what else is there? Oh, there's the tiger mech, yeah, which is a real monster. Oh, yeah. Well, they're all, they were designed traditionally, so, um, so to put it, to sort of put it in perspective, the Tiger Mech took me about seven months to actually design. Yeah, uh, which is a long time because it's, it's all milliput and plastic and building the thing and filing it and then going, oh, actually I don't really like the look of that. I'll have to break the legs down and rebuild them or I'll have to change the look of that, which is so time consuming. And, the Panzer Mech took four weeks to make. Right, okay. That's the new one, the 3D print one. Took four weeks to make from my drawings. So, I, I'm having to learn, it's a bit of a learning curve for me because I'm, I'm having to change from um, being a sculptor full time to being kind of a sculptor to straight line design person. So, I've got to come up with um, actual. Um, plan drawings for the thing for the guy to work off rather than uh, just a random pencil sketch because we, we, we worked off a pencil sketch for the first one. Some things worked and some things didn't so it had to go backwards and forwards a bit too much. Yeah. So for the, uh, the the next couple I did like plan drawings for the whole thing and that's worked out really, really well. Oh, right, um, so it's going, so going work back to like technical design style drawing sort of things? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, you know, perspective you know, not perspective, so straight on from the side, top view, side, you know, rear view, details of the engine decks, details of the weapons, all broken down into, or break it into parts that we can then cast and then use to produce our resin uh, moulds. Yeah, so if, say, it's got, um, oh, the Panzer Mech has got um, a main gun, it's got a barrel section, it's got um, a separate... Uh, separate headlights, it's got separate exhaust, and it's got a separate fuel tank. So all those bits, when we make them, when they're printed, are all on separate sprues, and we just got to clean those up and then use those as the master patterns, you know, for our next stage. Yeah, yeah. Of course, I suppose it's one of those things of you could then potentially use uh, common parts in other vehicles as well. Yeah. That's right, yeah. So once we've got the gun barrel design and we've got the headlight design, they'll all be identical and they'll be exactly the same size. Um, you know, like the hatches, the turrets, all kinds of stuff like that. The joints as well. So once we've designed a joint, that's the universal joint, then it should fit that, that series of vehicles. Which is what we're going to do with the Panzer Mech. So we've got the first one's kind of got, um, he's, ca he's carrying an 88mm gun, basically. I don't know if you've seen a Titan fall at all, it's kind of like, uh, you know, the robots in that carry big guns. Yeah. So it's kind of like a World War Two version of that, if you like. And the, um, we'll make, you know, we want to make, a, the first thing we want to make if we get through our stretch goal, to our stretch goal, we we'll make a flamethrower version for that vehicle. But what we're going to do is actually redesign the Panzer Mech chassis slightly. Because the Germans, you know what the Germans were like in World War Two, they, they were always messing about with their tank designs. They couldn't leave it alone, could they? They couldn't just go, well, we'll just stick a flamethrower on that and it'll be all right. No, we're going to change the way the, the chassis looks. We're going to change this. We're going to change that. So we want to do that as well. Yeah. And so the next, the, the first one will be the flame, the flam jotten. The flam jotten. Right. And that will have, I don't know, if you go on the Kickstarter, you know, I sent you a link, you can actually see um, a drawing for it under Objective 1, kind of near the bottom. This obviously make this obviously makes great radio at this point. <laughs> yeah, but, uh... <laughs> but seeing as you're going to come out after the Kickstarter started, it means people can go onto the Kickstarter and have a look. <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> indeed, of course, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, gentle listener, if you scroll down to Objective One, you will find the <laughs> Flamjotun, <laughs> which yes. looks really rather cool, actually. <laughs> So, this is the first one, yeah? This is the second one. Right. This is the one that's based on the, the same chassis, so it's got the same legs. The, the hull is actually the same shape. It's got... We've removed the fuel tank, and it's now got a flamer tank on the back. Right. 
yeah it's got different shoulders it's got different the the sort of the hatch front hatch is a different design and it's kind of got a rebreathing sort of thing on you know like um, an air filter on yeah. the front because i figured there'd be a lot of smoke and stuff <laughs> but you can see that style of drawing that's that's the sort of drawing i, I supplied to the guy there three yes design guy got you Okay, right. So that's the first one. So, so where are we hoping to go from here then? Uh, I mean, obviously, it's a case of uh, uh, right. So, so, so you've got the the Panzermec, then you've got the the Jotun. Yeah. Uh, what's potentially on, on the workbench as far as this particular Kickstarter? Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, I can't. Yeah, you know, I can't believe you just you you're just doing a Kickstarter to produce two models. No, no, we want to go bigger than that. We want to make more models. So yeah. we've got a um, Bulldog, um, which is a British mech. Um, again, you're going to have to scroll. <laughs> if you go up to what next, there's a section called what next, above pledge selection. Yeah. Yeah. So if you the, the project Bulldog, you can just sort of see the edge of the model. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's a British heavy mech. Mm-hmm. So we want to do that. And there's a couple of photographs of that on there. And then there's Project, well, it's basically a Sherman mech. And we want to do a Sherman mech for the Americans and then a Russian one. So we want to cover, you know, all the nations, basically. And definitely right. a Japanese one. Okay, and and it looks like on this, you, you, uh, uh, you're going to be doing things like mech pilots as well and stuff like that? Yeah, you get mech pilots. So is it just mechs, or I mean, are, are, uh, are you producing other, um, other weapons, other infantry? I've got, some, yeah, you've got, you've got some surprises up my sleeve. So I don't want to tell you everything. I want to keep a little bit in reserve, but I want yes, to make U.S. Marine Corps infantry, and I want to make Japanese as well, part of this. So we want to make some some traditional miniatures, but they're they're a weird World War Two, so they'll be body armor, gas mask kind of look. Right. Okay. And th- and this is going back. This is going back a little bit to the sort of stuff we were we were originally thinking about when Six of the Third Reich Two. That's right. Yeah, it's stuff we right. had planned for that. So it, it's kind of a mixture of the two because we we had a lot of things tooled for that Kickstarter, and when we cancelled it, you know, they're just they're there. So they they just make a good fit for this one as well. And we've got things like the um, Tesla cannon. We're going to release that by the Kickstarter. Oh yeah, I suppose that. Oh, that's a cool model. Like that, that that's really cool, actually. I like the look of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that would fit. Yeah, that would fit in so well in so many weird war, um, weird war armies. That is, that is really nice. And we've got the um, the German um, war wheel, which I think I sent you an email that with an attachment on for the, the war wheel. Yeah, <laughs> that, that is that is just mental. Yeah, you know, you know. So it's effectively what sixty mil in diameter, and yeah, it's, a big it's a wheel with two guns on each side. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that like? Like a recon vehicle, sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. It, well, it's it, yeah, it, yes. It, well, it's an assault vehicle, so it's for kind of breaking through assault, you know, because it's that big heavy track. Yeah, it's actually based on um, there's a German vehicle. Um, I think it's called the Mine Work. Mine. It's, it's it's like a mine crushing vehicle. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's one of these experimental ones. We only made a couple of. It has these huge, great big wheels on the front of it with metal plates on. And it basically rumbles about the battlefield, crushing minefields and blowing them up <laughs> as it goes. I wouldn't want to drive it, by the way. Well, that's what it does. So the wheels right. are sort of based loosely on that, and then the guns are based, uh, and the turrets are based on the, um, oh, I can't remember the name of the damn thing, it's the German um, anti-aircraft, the late, the Kugelblitz. Kugelblitz. The name of the turret. Ooh. I think you had to be a right bit of that one. Well, so, so that's another one of the kind of mad vehicles you have planned for uh, for, uh, for Panzermech then. Okay. Yes. So, yeah. by the time this goes out, it would have launched. Uh, so it's launching on the 4th of February? Yes, it is. Yeah. On my birthday. Yeah. Right. Oh, cool. Happy birthday. Ah, oh, cheers, Neil. 
I shall be having a cake and pressing go on the Kickstarter at the same time. Excellent stuff, excellent stuff. And <laughs> how long is it running for? Uh, it finishes um, beginning of March, so something like the 4th of March, I think it is. Oh, right, so it's like a 30-day Kickstarter. On the March, Saturday, yeah, 4th of March. Cool. So, so all being well, lots of uh, lots of extra bits and extra goodies to look forward to during uh, 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 during February. Then, yeah, it'll do what it does. You know, it'll it'll be good though. Plenty, we've got plenty of stuff lined up for it. And uh, it's all three D. Well, apart from the stuff I'm sculpting. Yeah. So, when do you think you're going to come back to doing the second edition of the rules, Andy? Is that still on the cards? Um. John, John Austin's been working on that in the background. So, you see, one of the problems we've got is we, we want to stay current as well. So, it's kind of looking at the games that people are playing and kind of going, oh, actually, well, the games have moved away from that kind of um, Warhammer um, model, if you know what I mean, to something mm. that plays a little faster, a little bloodier. So it may be that we need to kind of sit down again and kind of revise it and kind of go, you know, do do we need to change this? Do we need to change that? And we'd like to write in the stuff that we make for Panzermech as well. So I can't really say, I can't give a definite day when we'd, we'd actually come back to that. But if, if there's enough demand on the Kickstarter, then, you know, we'd definitely look at it again. Yeah, because I, I, I mean, obviously, with, uh, with with what you're producing, is it is it going to be a case of? Uh, I, I know you said you're, you're concentrating on miniatures, but will it be a case of once you know, the miniatures are available, uh, you'll be issuing rules to integrate yeah. them into your into into your current secrets? Uh, yeah, in, into version one of the game. Yes, we will. Yeah, yeah. So it'll have its armaments, its um, its um, RP recruitment points, all that kind of stuff. Cool. And we'll put a PDF compendium out there, kind of thing, and well, just see how that goes. Yeah, much in the same way as you did for like Empire of the Dead and stuff, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, people love that sort of stuff. Like that I mean, they downloaded thousands of those um, free PDF things off our website. My webmaster goes crazy. It's like all the bandwidth's going. <laughs> Excellent stuff. So, as I say, so, oh, okay, so that's a thirty-day Kickstarter. Uh, you're looking to get. Five thousand pounds as as an initial target, yeah. Yeah, that'll cover the first the first one, yeah. Yeah. Now, as you say, so so this is your first venture into three D tooling. Yeah. So, how have you found it? Um, I, I mean, I know you were saying that you you had to kind of go through that learning curve of changing how you design stuff, and but but the fact that you know you you're reaping the rewards in the time. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, but I mean, I mean, I say, how have you found it, and is this going to be something that you think you're going to be doing a lot more of? Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, it's it's definitely a steep learning curve. I mean, you've kind of got to you, you've just got to learn as you go, uh, and 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 talking to somebody who doesn't speak English is a difficult. Uh, <laughs> It's quite difficult to get over what you want to do, which is why it's better to communicate with drawings, basically. As long as your drawings are accurate, everything's fine. Okay. And you know, we uh, and he the the three D people, the, this guy this guy's really good actually. But some of them don't understand how kits work for manufacture, um, so they'll design um, something that they can print with a three D printer. Um, but it won't translate then into manufacture because it'll have. It's very easy to design undercuts into a 3D print because the the thing prints in the round kind of thing. So you can actually yeah. it will build undercuts into itself. Um, I know the software that will actually look at that, but that's generally for things like um, washing up bottles and things like that. For plastics, you know, they test them for that will come out of the plastic mold, but it doesn't work in the same way for resin. You've kind of got to look at it and go, yeah, we can actually make that, or no, we'll have to fill the gap there because there's a big hole through the thing's leg and it'll just tear the mold to pieces. So that's one of the things you've got to learn. Mm -hmm. And then you've got to do, I mean, dealing with the material as well, it's a different material. What we get back off the 3D printer is kind of like... Um, it reminds me 
reminds me of a ceramic almost, but it's kind of covered in, so it's like a brick red ceramic material, which is obviously some sort of resin, but it's very ceramic -y. And um, it comes with its own residue all over it because the print, it's print, it must be printed in a bath, some sort of solution. But, yeah, yeah, the the industrial ones are quite often some form of gypsum, apparently. Right. Okay. Oh. No, this is definitely not that. It's 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 definitely a red. But yeah, the once once you move on from from the little toy things that the likes of Muggins here has, um, you get into some really quite interestingly esoteric materials that will actually print if you're prepared oh, to right. spend the money. Yeah, I've seen some that actually print. Metal, metalized resin, so it's like a powder suspended. You know, it's got metal filaments in it. So what you get yeah. out, out it looks like a metal part, but it isn't a metal part. It's just bonded resin and all all kinds of materials. But yeah, it's good to work with actually. But you've got to clean this. You've got to clean the supports off because it'll it'll come printed on the supports. You know, the parts actually it comes like a like um a mesh framework underneath the thing. You've got to cut all that away and then clean up the joint parts and then just clean any surface, abra you know, anything, any slight abrasions and things they might have because of that, where it connects to that print part. And then, like I say, you've got to print, you've got to get rid of all this orange goo because that, that's the main thing to get off it. But it, it yeah. just, we just, I just use vodka, actually, neat vodka, cheap vodka from Tesco's. And then you, <laughs> you just uh, soak your parts, all your parts in that, and that will remove a good quantity of the stuff. And then the rest of it, you just keep working at it with a cotton bud kind of thing. And so you've got a clean pattern. And then you can drill it and pin it, just like you could any kind of resin material. Cool. Good. It's good. I, I'd love to be able to do the actual 3D um, actual design work as well, but that's kind of beyond me, that technical side of thing. All right, so, so at this point you're going to stick to traditional sculpting. I, I am, yeah, I'm a traditional sculptor. Yeah, I've tried, I've tried to learn various things, but it's just too slow for me. It's too slow. I'm just too old. <laughs> you know, I've tried using um, ZBrush and things like that, and, and while I can do it, I can do the sculpting in it. And I, but I'm thinking, man, I could have made ten things while I've made, <laughs> you know, while I've made this one thing in ZBrush, and then it's got to be printed, I've got to send it off and it's got to function, you know, it's got to be a it can't be a shell it's got to be a solid object kind of thing. it can't yeah. have any cavities through it and things like that because, which can ruin it so yeah I'm going to stick to the design work and the, and, and the illustrations you know, just do, do the design and things Plus you are going to be busy doing all the Byzantine stuff for me Oh yeah, definitely, Mike. Yeah, yeah, I've got to do all that for you. Yeah. Yeah, you got a thousand years to go, that mate. <laughs> well, there's a lot of different Byzantines. You know, it's very confusing the Byzantine stuff. It's like, which ones do you do? Which ones are going to be popular? You know, is it Nikephorian? Is it the early? You know, Belisarian? Is it? <laughs> yeah, just do the early ones and and the late ones. I'll do. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just still marvelling at the marvelling at how how on earth Mike's got three hundred thousand fifteen mil figures into his into his house. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't buy all of them, Neil. Just just a, a large box of um, Phaeacians and Scythians. I guess I yep. didn't buy all of them, just most of them. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen your Scythians; they're really nice. Yeah. Yeah, I got a good painter. Is that the guy in Wales? Yeah. Yeah, he's very good. Hello, Gareth. <laughs> so, so there's there's no truth in the room that your local postie's been doing weight training then. <laughs> no, he just gets a few packs every month or so, half an army. There you go. <laughs> sneak sneak him in under the wife's radar. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I, I have to pick the news to him that um, I, I bought the uh, Spal Barber archers that you just done. Oh right, yeah. Um, so I've, I've done all the spar bow already, but it's the old. So I, I got the shield. I, I got two rows, rows of the shield. Right. So I get to um, send them back to Garth and say, "Can you paint these arches? And could you take off the back row of the shields and rebase the whole off for me?" <laughs> so. Ooh. <clears throat> he'd be fine. <laughs> he'll, be, he'll be okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. He enjoys the challenge, and it's big bases as well. So. 
But it's going to look so nice having the, the shields at the front and then the arches just behind them. Oh, what what rules are you using? Uh, sword and spear. All oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, they do look good, those sparrow barrows, yeah, definitely. So we had it's long tough. debates about the sparrow barrows, whether they would have, um, they were just guys with shields at the front, or whether they all had the shield, or, oh, man. Or we should do a pack with shields so people could do, you know, entire units with shields. Or, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a trick, it's, you depends which source you read, doesn't it? Because they sort of say about the guys going up with the shields and then there's archers behind and they never say they 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 use them almost like um, pavises. You were using yeah, them, they um... just stuck a stick in the ground and stuck the, the shield on the, on the yeah. thing. So it's like, uh, which, you know, and then you've got people saying, when, oh, you make the wrong things for the, you know, the Sparrow of Arrows. And we're like, no, we don't. <laughs> we make the one, we make this version, you know, if you want the other version, tough, you know, in it. Yeah. You can't have, you know, too many versions. Well, Andy, it's it. It sounds like it's going to be a, a great kickstart. I mean, well, looking at everything we've seen so far, all the teasers and everything, it looks like uh, we've got some cracking models in there, and uh, and, and especially it, you know, as well if you we get the uh, get to revisit back to the you know, the. Uh, the Pacific stuff for th- uh, for six of the third Reich that'd be brilliant. Um, so we wish you all the very best with uh, all the all the very best with the next project. So as I say, Panzermech, which is uh, running until the fourth uh, of March. Yeah. So yeah, cool. So and then obviously from that point on, uh, uh, I suppose the, the next place most people will see you is Salute. They will. Yeah, should be at Salute in uh, April. Is it April this year? It is April this year, yes. Yeah. And we'll see you all there. Oh, definitely. definitely. Yes, definitely we'll be there. Yes, and as I say, you can tease us with, you can, te- and then you can tease us with some more, you know, uh, Pacific War Fortune Battle. Definitely. Definitely. Look forward to that. Yeah. Well, yeah, the next time we've got it released, I mean, we've got to get our fingers out and crack on, but people, you know, we just fall behind. That's the problem. We're just too successful. <laughs> It's not a bad thing to be, mate. No, no, no. Well, Andy, thanks ever so much for your time. Uh, right, it's l- lovely to catch up with you again, and uh, all be well. We'll speak to you soon. Okay. All right, be good. All right, bye-bye. Okay, bye. 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 We always love to hear from you, our listeners. You can contact us in a couple of ways. You can do that via email, at mailbag at meeplesandminiatures.co.uk or you can now leave a voicemail message for us. The number to call is 0116 318 4114. Please don't, call charges may apply. So there we have it, Panzer Mech, new Kickstarter from Westwind. Going great guns. Yeah, it's funded, isn't it? Yeah, it's funded. Uh, and more so. And they've put loads of the original Secrets of the Third Reich stuff up now, uh, like 30% off. Oh, it's very tempting. Cause I've got, I've got all the stuff that they did for Incursion. You know, the, um, uh, uh the board game that, uh, that, uh, was done with them and, oh, crikey, I can't remember the name of the company now. Grindhouse. Uh, Grindhouse, that was it. Grindhouse games. Yes. Uh, I've got all that stuff, and I'm, uh, and then say, looking at some of this stuff, and, and the, oh, some of the stuff's really nice. Mm. Uh, it's very tempting. Oh, dear. And of course, it fit in well with, I mean, cause, because it's all alternative World War Two. it fit in well with things like, I, I don't know, I mean, you've got some Cthulhu oh, skirmish. Yeah. Say, all, all those other twenty-eight mil World War Two armies you haven't got. Well, yeah, but uh, yeah, but you, you, but you have, mate. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, but he is about one hundred and fifty miles away. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. But you know, yeah, some very tempting offers on the pan, on the Panzer Bay Kickstarter, but it's funded. So uh, well done, Westwind, and uh, I'm trying to avoid it, especially since the pledge manager for uh, Mythic Battles has just opened.
I was carefully not looking at that to the end of the month. Y- yes, y- yes, stay away from that one. Yes, Mythic Battles. Ah, uh, dear. Yeah. I'm going to be so poor this year. Never mind. Never mind. Moving on. So, uh, yeah, interesting stuff. Uh, I'm very tempted by this gangs of Camarag or Camarag or whatever it is that Mr. The, the, Mr. Jo- Hello, Mr. Jones. That Mr. Rich Jones has been been going on about. Um, I've got it bookmarked at least four different places. Look, waiting for it to come into stock. Although I, I know you said it, it Five Storm Games have got it, but you know. Uh. <laughs> Too many games. We're near the end of the show. And so, one last thing. As I mentioned during the uh, what we've been up to, uh, this Sunday, uh, as we record this, which is the 12th of February, if you've downloaded this show first thing on, on Saturday morning, you'll hear this. Sunday, 12th of February, a uh, brand new war game show in the UK uh, called Robin, uh, Red on Blue in Nottingham. Okay, it's at the Nottingham Tennis Centre, and looks to be an interesting ga- uh, an interesting day. They've got forty odd traders, uh, quite a few games going on as well. So I'll be there. Mister Love, are you going? Uh, are you coming with me? Why haven't you decided yet? Oh, I haven't decided yet. <laughs> okay, uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, so looking forward to that. Hoping to get a look at this new uh, this new samurai game that Warlord have been talking about. That looks interesting. I shall wait to see how much love, care, and attention was actually lavished on the rules, as that's the thing I'm slightly paranoid about. Yeah, interestingly, they've a- they've actually published a-, a free PDF download of the rules as we record this today. So it is a, a um it, it came out on the Warlord uh, on the Wednesday Warlord newsletter they've actually published uh, the PDF rules online I shall have a browse so you can go and have a look but uh, but yeah I'm I am tempted by that uh, but again this is probably something that will come out in a few weeks and we'll and we'll That's only because you're a helpless samurai addict isn't it It is it is guilty as charged you wanna So um yeah time to wrap up I think guys yeah Yep Indeedy. Cool. Okay. So until next time, all that we managed to be done is to say thank you for joining me. Uh, thank you to, uh, to Mr. Whittaker. Thank you very much, sir. You're very welcome. And, uh, thank you to the Luffmeister. Yep. Thank you. Cheers. Good to speak. And of course, thank you to uh, the Welsh wizard himself. Mr. Hobbs, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Nice to hear you sounding a bit better. Oh, I feel great. <laughs> And you, uh, you you sound better than you did during the interview, anyway, Hobbsy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. Mm. And uh, finally, just want to say a huge thank you to everybody who's backed us on Patreon. We now have uh, thirty backers on Patreon, but it also means that we have hit our first stretch goal. Oh, stretch goal, goal, or whatever they call it on Patreon. Uh, funding target. Funding target. Thank, thank you very much. We've hit our first funding target. What would uh, you do without me? Answers on a postcard too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but y- yes, it, y- but yeah, no, no, we've hit our first funding target, which means that we do not have to worry about our hosting costs for this year. Uh, they will now be fully covered, and it also means that we uh, that we can even look at doing things like uh, increasing our storage capacity, uh, and which will ha- especially if I start shooting videos and deciding that I don't want to host them on YouTube. Uh, we've also released our first package Patreon backers only show. So if you're listening to this and don't know where it is, that's because you're not a backer and mm. you're missing something. Indeed. Uh, so yes we've done that and thank you for ba- supporting us on Patreon thank you for supporting us if you're donating via PayPal you should have also if you donate via PayPal you should have also received a link uh, for the download and if you haven't please email me because I've just obviously missed you off the list I do apologise So, all that we managed to be said is a thank you once again one and all for listening. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. 
and we will catch up with you again next week. So until then, happy gaming, and uh, take care. Bye. Bye. Wake up, Luffy. I was just waiting for him to go. Where did babies come from? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Meeples and Miniatures podcast. If you've enjoyed the show, why not share it with others by leaving us a review on iTunes? And if you have any comments or questions, you can always email the show. The address is info at meeplesandminiatures.co.uk And you can also visit our webpage, where you'll find a complete episode archive, all the View from the Veranda podcasts, rules reviews and our blog of hobby items and news, which is updated several times a week. This is also where you'll find the links to our presence on social media. And here you can follow us on Twitter or join our Facebook group. And finally, here you can also find details should you wish to support us by making a donation to the podcast. All this on the Meeples and Miniatures website, www.meeplesandminiatures.co.uk. The Meeples and Miniatures podcast is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 3.0 unported license. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.